uh, from today we will uh, know about the spring and all of you you already you have seen the spring how it is look like <coughs> and where it is used you will see in the automobile engine in the car and bike chassis they use the spring also in rickshaw they use the spring in the rickshaw if you look carefully there is a kind of oval shape loop spring um, just under the seat you will install in the both side you will see this kind of plate so this is also called loop spring because you apply load you squeeze a little bit then you take out the load it come back in previous position so you know, in I see engine in the bulb, they use the bulb spring. In the car and bike, in the front and rear, you see there is a spring used in the suspension system. <clears throat> and a lot of household equipment, they use the spring. For example, uh, you like to dry your cloth hanging in a wire, use a little clip they use a spring there, okay? So let's see what is the uh, spring, what is the definition? It says, spring is a mechanical device which undergoes significant deformation without failure and permanent deformation. For example, in the car or bike, we use helical spring. <clears throat> in the suspension system. So what happened actually? You are driving your bike in a even road, you don't have any problem. But when road condition is coming like that, then if there is no spring, then what will be happen? Your vehicle will go down, immediately go up, there will be too much vibration and shaking in the your body and the body of the uh, bike. Similar thing happened to car. So what is the function of spring? Say your bike wheel is right over here. So if this point is the reference point, say this is your uh, reference line. That means this point. Respect to this point, there is some height, right? That means if you think this way so when you came in over here respect to uh, bottom portion your height is is <coughs> so how much energy you have over here a potential energy mg is so when you fall down from this height, what will happen? Your bite might be broken or you might be injured. But because why? If this height gradually increase, more possibility will break your bone. If this height gradually decrease, nothing will be happen. What is the reason? Because height decreasing, MGA is decreasing. Height increasing, MJ is increasing. So if you have a spring, that energy will be absorbed by the helical spring. So when it's coming down, your spring will squeeze and it will absorb all the energy. So it will not feel that much shaking. When it's coming over here, a spring will gradually expand immediately and take you back in previous position. So on time it is absorbed energy, next time it is releasing that energy. 
so pring is used as a storage of energy <coughs> so right over here it's saying spring is used absorb energy due to resilience which may be restored when it is required what is the resilience resilience mean uh, absorb energy energy within elastic limit so you say this kind of stress strain graph so <clears throat> this is yield point from the yield point under the graph this mass energy is called energy of resilience that mean a object can absorb this mass energy without permanent deformation for example a driving a car at a certain speed okay so you are driving in forward direction and one second please just just a second so somebody say you're moving forward direction you hit somebody at lower speed what is your energy half m v square right your kinetic energy <coughs> but you see nothing happened to your car what does it mean that mean all the energy is absorbed by your bumper or front portion of the car but deformation within the elastic limit it deform it bend but when you it hitting you break something immediately it come back to previous position if it is not come back to previous position that mean deformation within this range then you will see your damage in the car for example keep kicking your car nothing happen in the body actually what happened you kicking that mean there is some deformation it absorbed the energy but you take it out it came back in previous position so similarly it's saying if it absorb energy within elastic limit that is called resilience so it's a it provide elastic force for useful purpose and flexibility that mean one time it store energy next time it giving you back spring uses in mechanical design for shock or vibration protection store or release energy after resisting force or reaction force for mechanism sometime say for example you like to throw a ball at a certain distance how can do it or certain height okay you can throw upward you have other option you have a helical spring top of the spring you put a plate and squeeze with high force so your spring will be squeeze say this mass you keeping this mass right now tie down with the rope okay now you put a ball on it <clears throat> and with the knife you cut the rope what will happen spring will go back in previous position and your ball will go high that mean whatever energy if squeeze too much after cut you wrote ball will fly too much that mean <coughs> it deform and store energy without failure and giving you back again without failure so it is work like a storage of mechanical energy and there are a lot of type of spring normally you see helical spring but they have a leaf spring <coughs> torsion spring and also loop spring loop spring i already show you that in the rickshaw there is a loop spring and leaf spring you already you have seen in the truck or the 
private car normally some older station wagon they use the leaf spring in the back side so you see in the truck this kind of thing then you see one more behind of this one and depending on the size of the truck and load bearing capacity like that okay so this is and all the all of them they tie together with the bolt or not so but they work like a spring and this portion it tie up with the vehicle chassis so due to the load this portion move upward and downward and work like a spring that is called lip spring <coughs> normally in a heavy duty truck or buses they use this lip spring a number of uh, in a flat plate it depends on what is the capacity of the uh, truck that means load bearing capacity now uh, in this truck instead of lip spring you can use helical spring but your size of the wire might be need extremely heavier and there is a other thing how we got the spring a rod then you bend right but you need some force to bend it then you do the heat treatment you will see in the train bogey you look carefully when you have chance to look you see they use the helical spring around the wheel and very good size i think around diameter might be more than one in size okay uh, similarly in the <coughs> truck instead of leaf spring we can use helical spring too you might see there's some using helical spring in passenger car normally uh, quite a corolla the smaller car they use the helical spring and the shock absorber but uh, what is the advantage and disadvantage of helical spring and leaf spring in leaf spring you see all the heavy duty truck they use leaf spring because if use hell is possible you can use the helical spring but if it's break down one spring somewhere then your whole system you need to send it there is no chance to repair <coughs> but in leaf spring after inspection you see uh, one plate is break still it is able to carry the load by the rest of them say you have multiple leaf spring like that you have one more leaf spring like that you have one more like that and say this one right on is a crack but still this one and the bottom one will carry the load capacity will be reduced but it able to carry then next office or repair center use the sense the display so that make easier to maintain and easier to replace instead of whole spring replace you can replace the only one part whatever you might have crack you might have corrosion so that's why you will see some vehicle and truck using leaf spring <clears throat> and we'll see some picture of leaf spring and torsion spring and the loop spring in the next slide you see the leaf spring right over here this leaf spring leaf spring is coming from leaf right for example you have a wall in the wall if you hang a this kind of sheet plate this also work like a leaf spring because you put load take you put a load over here it will deform it will go down after you taking out the load it will come back in previous position this is also leaf spring that means thin plate is used to make the spring but there is only one spring uh, if i hold my pen apply load see it come back in previous position that means it behaving like a spring <coughs> so
so this is leaf spring used in the truck so you see there is a several plate they use and end of the plate attached is called plate eyeball with the nut screw and bearing they attached to the chassis uh, of the truck then you see spiral spring a lot of equipment toy you'll see they have uh, spiral spring uh, some toy or in the was older was he was the you have to uh, turn the knob right every day then they have a this uh, spiral you tap the knob then all the uh, spiral is coming in this shape then gradually it expand that means it is losing that other thing then the expand all of them your was is turn off okay <coughs> then spring washer spring or spring washer you see this one right over here it shape is kind this right so if you apply force it will let throw upward and it will move along both direction it will squeeze it take out load it come back into your position that is, is called this one the showing the section view it's called spring washer. Then loop spring, that one is loop spring. You will see in automobile, a lot of hooks they connect. They use the this loop spring to attach the uh, pipe or hooks tightly, okay? In a lot of uh, engine or also some chemical industry, they use this kind of loop spring to connect to hooks or pipe together. Then torsion spring, this one is torsion spring. And you will see this kind of torsion spring use, uh, use we use. Sometimes we use the cliff to attach some paper. They inside, they have a loop spring. Then <coughs> you dry your cloth and hang cloth by cliff. That also has torsion spring, okay? Now, what is the helical spring? How it is look like? So this is the helical spring. In the helical spring, there is a length of the spring. So length of the spring say from here to here. One thing, the mean diameter of the spring. So depending on these two things, the energy absorption capacity of the spring either increase or decrease then this diameter of this rod also important if you use higher diameter rod then obviously you need more force to squeeze or to pull the spring then distance between these two spring is called piece so if the distance is more or close also influence on capacity of the spring. Then uh, diameter of the wire, I already told you, the mean diameter. So all those things is influence on uh, capacity of the spring. Other thing, number of ton, how many ton is there? Is one ton, three ton or hundred ton? You have too many ton, then you have more energy especially the tension spring you like to keep something in tension they use all the uh, too many turn and their piece is very low that means spring are close together and <clears throat> if you use as a compression spring then you will see the piece of the spring a little bit high because in that case it will deform from here to say we are applying load different from here to here right that deformation is more uh, so that's why they <coughs> keep more distance between the two wire that is called the the piece okay and k k is the spring constant what is the spring constant 
you need you look at the unit into the physical constant newton meter that means if you apply one newton or if you want one uh, meter deflection how much force you need to apply that is called a spring constant for example this spring if we apply force 100 newton and it is squeezed by for example one centimeter that means 10 millimeter this mass deformation so what will be the spring constant so spring constant k equal to force by deformation that means delta so right of high you will get k equal to 100 newton divided by 10 millimeter so what will get ultimately coming 10 newton per millimeter that is the spring constant that means for if you like to deform 4 millimeter you need to apply 40 newton load on the spring scale value is higher value that means you need higher force to deform the spring the spring is more stronger k value is increase okay k value decrease that means spring is gradually getting weaker or it is a weak spring <coughs> now uh, we need to know that how a spring uh, fail <coughs> normally spring is fail like it get cut two piece along like over here over here over here say for example you are in the break you just take out a banana to eat in your break time and one of your friend just cut with the knife and take the other half <coughs> So, what kind of force he applied? Close. No, close the door. I have a class. Okay, so uh, <coughs> this banana, does it become uh, two part, right? So, what type of force this one? Anyone? Anyone could tell me? Hello? So can you question the, uh, tell the question again? Say uh, in the, you have a break in the campus. So you need to eat something. So you buy a banana from a store, but one of your friend, he just cut the banana with a knife and within a minute, and before you realize, he take the other heart and try to eat, right? So what kind of force he applied with a knife? Shear force. Shear force, good. Shear force, sir, yeah. Yeah, due to apply shear force, always a parts become two parts. Okay, what, what is your ID? Sir, 37. One second, you are section B, 19. Uh, section A. Section A, yeah, right. The, section A, what is the role? 37, 037. 037, okay, good. So that mean is a shear force. <clears throat> I give you an example. While I was working in US, and one of my colleague, he was working on project. <coughs> there was a bearing. So a metal bearing is like that, right? There is a, right over here is a ball. Then they have a casing of the bearing. That casing of the bearing, uh, it was used in the drone in Afghanistan. <coughs> And made by other company but after 200 flight hour 
say drone flight 200 hours then they uh, take it back the drone <coughs> then they found that that bearing uh, cover has a crack like that so what kind is failure obviously this is shear failure so they look at it that uh, how shear force is coming here how was, was their stress report so finally we found that who were analysis this one analysis was wrong and because there is a high shear force is working over here but they don't count it so we change the material from steel to titanium and uh, it solved the problem <clears throat> so you break something so obviously shear force is working there so in helical spring what will happen the wire might be cut a breakdown right over here that means shear force and if any one piece of the any location wire got cracked or become two part your whole spring is gone is failed you need to replace it but in leaf spring uh, whichever is a breakdown you just change that part <clears throat> so we need to check that how this shear force is coming in the spring what is the shear stress shear stress tau equal to direct shear force divided by area right this is the shear force this shear force is a direct force that means i give you example they you cut the banana of your friend and he immediately take the half that means with a knife he apply this type of force so if he apply on newton force with a knife divided by the area you get the tau <coughs> but in the spring normally nobody apply force right over here what happened in the suspension system you will see a shock absorber inside the coil right or sometime you can imagine you have a flat plate in that flat plate you put some weight then a spring might be squeezed right that will force normally applied in the spring at the center of the spring but nobody applies spring in the wire but how it is failed that means it is failed by some internal load now external load we can see from the outside but internal load and reaction we cannot see from outside so you sitting say you sitting on a wooden plate for example doctor and bottom of the plate there is a helical spring and it's separate in the ground so when you sit in the spring if ground is soft then what will happen it will go down but if a spring rests on a concrete surface that means hard surface then it will react uh, along this direction but you cannot see in your eye this this force only you can see this one how you can see my friend he is extremely fatty or it is 200 kg sitting on the uh, <coughs> table or chair and from there you can figure out his weight right but this force you cannot see from the outside similarly <clears throat> you sitting every day after three months you see there is a crack as a mechanical engineer you need to figure out where is the crack coming there so obviously nobody is applied force there but internally 
some force is working. So this force might be direct shear force and there might be shear force coming some other source. And anyone could tell me what is the other source of shear stress coming in a structure or parts? Anyone? No? Uh, torsion. If somebody twists your hand, ultimately it will snap right over here in the joint. Okay, it can detach. That means if one thing that happen, there might be some direct shear force, but there might be some torque is working. Because due to the torque, we know shear force is TR divided by J. And you see this formula for round bar, right? And all of them is round. So for direct shear force, there will be direct shear stress. How can we figure out? Direct shear force by area, right? By area. So what I'm saying, it is possibility that there might be two force working, internal force. Number one, direct shear force and direct some torsion. But from the outside, you cannot see. So what you need to do? You need to cut the <coughs> any wire and make the free body. Then see that how many force is working there. We can do later, later one. Now, uh, we need to see the spring geometry. So you see, this is called free length. That means length of the spring without load. And distance between two wire, say from this point, this point, is called piece, this distance. This distance is called piece. And distance from here to here is called mean uh, diameter of the spring. And diameter of the, this the wire is called wire diameter. This is also important, why? Use the bigger diameter rod, your spring will be more stronger. Again, if you decrease or increase this mean diameter, this also affect your capacity of your spring. Then number of turn. If you have too many turn, spring will be more stronger. If you have less turn, you will have less energy or less capacity of the spring. Other thing, spring constant that I already explained, right? Force divided by the deformation, you'll get spring constant. So we'll try to figure out that what will be, if we apply force F, then how much will be stress in the spring? Now we cannot see stress from outside. So you cannot measure it. Obviously there is a some tool to measure it, but we are not dis discussed that in undergraduate level. So uh, there is no tool to see the stress. So how will then calculate the stress? So obviously we need to have a formula, right? So that formula we try to derive. So I already told you, if helical spring is fail, there is two reason it might be fail. Number one, direct shear stress equal to F direct shear force divided by area. Other one, torsional shear stress is equal to TR divided by J. T is the torque. So there is possibility that both force is working there. 
So I put this formula again over here, just refresh your mind. But there is a one thing. <clears throat> we derive the formula tau equal to tr by j for a straight bar, straight round bar, you apply the torque. What, what will be shear stress? Here is the formula. But if you look carefully in the spring, even if you apply torque, that torque you are applying not in a straight bar, all the bar is you see they are round, right? So if you apply TR by J formula right over here, still it not be, it should not be accurate, right? So you need some correction might be there. Okay, we'll discuss it later. Now, <clears throat> we'll derive stress formula for helical spring. So we are making a assumption, a helical coil with round wire. We are thinking a round wire, helical spring. Spring is made of isotropic, isotropic homogeneous material and it's of a Hooke's law. This assumption is almost same in all the situation, okay? In you derive formula for beam, you derive formula for uh, column, pressure vessel, torsion, spring, everywhere. We always assume material is isotropic, homogeneous, and it of a Hooke's law. Unless you use the composite. If it's the composite, then material is not homogeneous, is not isotropic. Okay. We are saying uh, mean coil diameter is D. The, uh, this one, uh, this figure, actually this figure, but this is a schematic diagram. That means this is, I can make a simple view like that. So this is the upper turn. This is the lower turn and this is the third turn. This way you can represent a spring. So this spring is representing right in this figure. It's saying apply load at the center F. So obviously it should work through, react through the center. So this is the reaction and this is the force. So it's saying that mean coil diameter D and what diameter small d. Compression force is applied on the spring is F. Now it's a equilibrium force at the cut at anywhere in the body of the spring is shown below spring subject to direct shear and torsion. Now we'll look at it. Say so this spring in the right hand side, there is a force F. So it is reacting upward by force F. You can cut anywhere. Say I cut it right over here with a knife. And this is my upper portion. And I like to make the free body how we can make it. So it's a upper half I am taking right over here force F going through the center, right? So in right over here we have spring and how we can balance it. So we can balance it, this is F. So obviously right over here working F. So this F and this F, is it passing through the same line? Anyone? Is not going through the same line, right? So two force, one force right over here working downward and right over here other force working upward. So this will create a moment and try to rotate the body clockwise, right? 
So that you see right over there. I cut it right over here, right? So what I am saying, the right over here in upward direction force is F. This one F. So this F working along this direction, this one working in this direction. That means this F and this F try to kill the spring. So right over his free body, this is applied load. And throw right over here is the F. So I am balancing with this F and upward direction this F. So is it balance? Yes or no? Anyone? No? Yes. Balance? Uh, give me answer. Even is wrong, still okay. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think balanced. Yes. It balance. Yes, sir. Uh, Mahit, roll twenty one. Mahit, you are here. Zero one. You are zero one series. He might be not here. Okay, Shazan, season, season. Sorry, roll zero zero six. Yes, sir. This everybody is balance. Yes, sir. I think so. You think so? Okay. Yes, uh, you think carefully. The force is going through the same line. No, sir. No, sir. Different. No. So it is not balance. Saipur, roll sixty-nine. Yeah. You hear? Roll six nine. You see, he is not here. He might be Italy or France. Who knows? Okay. Uh, then see who is here. Uh, Mahfuz, roll 99. You are here? No? Roll 99. Okay. <clears throat> You are not here. Anyway, uh, I give you an example. You are just uh, standing in your uh, get, ask get. So let draw your head. And then on second, your neck, your body. Okay, then you have two legs, right? Say you have two legs, okay. So somebody pushing you right over here, downward. And somebody pulling you, your leg upward. What will happen? Whose direction possibility will fall down? Left or right? Anyone? Right, maybe. Right. Again, maybe. Right in, side, in, in, in there is no... The right side. No? The right. Right, right side, is sir. Right. Yes, sir. Because left side is already giving an upward force. Yeah, this one pushing him down, this one pushing him up. You will look, that's two force. Is it going through the same line or not? If two force going through the same line, then body will be this compressive, body will squeeze. But instead, right over here, say, this is working downward through this line, and say through leg, pushing him up. That means these two force making a, try to rotate the body in clockwise direction. So he'll fall down toward the right, right? So same thing over here, he's pushing him down, and the reaction force F working right this surface. Now, you see body is tilting. That means it try to rotate the body along clockwise direction. Now, you see when you driving a bike or you see in a car, the spring only move upward and downward. You never see the spring is tilting, right? You never see. But who is protecting that motion? 
so the moment between these two force will be force into distance so what is the distance from here to here dy2 so f into dy2 this is the moment right but due to the moment something bent but in spring you'll never see they are bending like you, you never see like that the spring this portion is bent you never see this portion bending downward no you'll never see okay so moment is not working there but you see the it is break right over here or right over here that means some shear force working shear force related to two force direct shear force and torsional shear force that means this moment actually working as a torque light in the wire so this force and this force they are rotating clockwise so that's why the torque working is anti clockwise and value of this torque equal to fd into 2 so you look in this wire there's two force working direct shear force fs equal to f and torque working that torque equal to fd by 2 now see both are creating shear stress or in the right over here so your shear stress tau will be direct shear force that mean f divided by the area of the spring this wire area of the wire plus this shear force the due to this torque i will figure out shear force is equal to torque into radius of the wire divided by j okay so uh, we'll keep it right over here but any any question anyone has any question about the spring no question hello no, no one question sure sir in uh, in uh, narrow body aircrafts while they're uh, touching down hmm. So, to wide body aircraft So, landing gear spring use helical spring. It depends on lot of things. Okay, that how he is landing. What is the angle of landing? Airplane can land in 45 degree angle or might be 10 degree angle or less than 10 degree angle. Also depends on speed or speed is landing. What is the length of the runway and condition of the runway, right? <clears throat> if runway is too short, he need to stop the aircraft uh, rapidly. This is one thing. Other thing, how he is landing. Uh, landing gear, you have the front, like a stick of wheel, right? Then rear landing gear, you have wheel in the left and right side. Uh, Sometimes you see if this landing gear is failed, then you'll see your cup to land on the this rear uh, wheel so how will do that mean he is landing right then he's close to the ground he's keep the nose up nose up but air cup is not flying keeping the nose up and landing that mean all the load is passing through the rear landing gear that way he will keep reduce the speed uh, speed of the air cup and at the last moment, he will keep the nose down. So there is a different condition 
and now you are saying in the air cup uh, they they don't use helical spring they might use the hydraulic shock observer okay and uh, i'm not that much familiar with or detailed design of the landing gear but landing gear uh, it come out from a hydraulic jack okay and it take it work like a column okay it taking the all the compressive load so your con uh, you are saying that wide body aircraft has less vibration and the narrow body aircraft has heavier vibration more vibration there might be uh, one thing that uh, wide body aircraft has more weight right but light aircraft they have less weight this might be on reason because to move a, a bigger size things you need have more energy right and other thing uh, during landing or takeoff vibration of the aircraft also depend what is the uh, wind speed in the ground and what is the direction of the wind speed okay and also depends how you are taking uh, landing and also uh, how you are taking off there is a one thing used is called flight envelope flight envelope mean say we used to modify a aircraft then you modified the flight envelope say you buy a brand new aircraft okay and in the boeing manual it say your maximum takeoff angle is 45 degree you can take off no problem with air velocity ground air velocity maximum say 15 mile per hour now any reason there is a some damage in the air curve and after 15 years you come to a, a store to repair say for our company or any other company they'll do some repair and modification they might install some other equipment then they'll make it check it that if this air cup is fly with the same flight in block is it it will survive or not then say no we need to reduce the flight in bluff. We can say maximum you can use 30 degree. And your wind speed maximum allow 10 miles per hour. We'll give this information to the customer to make sure the pilot obey this rule. This is a simple example I am giving you. Otherwise, the aircraft uh, will be crash. It depends also how we handle. Like a car accident depends on the uh, you know driver, right? And also the airplane accident also depends on the pilot. Okay. And I hold down on second. Just I like to show you something then you might be Okay, uh, let me show you something. Uh, let me stop the sharing. I'd like to show you a picture. Did you see a picture of the aircraft, right? Yes, sir. And what did you see over here? Let me stop.